Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale scratch-built Cadillac Gauge V100 armored car. Since the last video update, as one can clearly see, the suspension components are starting to be mounted to this model. However, in order to get the model up to this state here, the hull, need, as well as some of these parts, need to go through some revisions and modifications. We'll be going over all these additions and modifications in this video, so stay tuned, because there's going to be a lot of stuff coming right at you. Starting this video off takes us back to the lower hull. In the last video, we can recall that I went ahead and described the work that went into the modification of the original model by adding the wheel well mods, the lower plate mods, as well as the front section mods. Well, like I alluded to at the end of that video, the next area of focus will be the model's suspension. And I now have the appropriate components on hand in order to get that ball rolling. And here on the table, I have all the components that I have on hand for the suspension. Like I stated in the first Project Star video for this project, this model here is going to be utilizing as much 3D printed components as possible for the detail components. This is a departure compared to my earlier builds in which those models I would have had to fabricate and tool these components up in traditional materials and then cast them in resin. So this model here is going to be a departure from that type of a mindset. I also want to take this time to point out that all the components that you see here on the table are really in their rough prototype phase. As the model progresses, I'm probably going to be revisiting these components and improving them for actual production units. For this model here, these pieces here should be perfectly suffice, but once I get ready to post these components on the ECA catalog, they are going to be more improved compared to the condition that you see here in this video. However, when it comes to the actual materials, more than likely these will probably stay the same once I dig into showing these pieces in more depth in a second. Starting with the model's leaf springs, these components here, as you can see, are one complete printing and are ready for installation directly from the get-go. No other work is needed to be made to these components. Now because of the material this model will not have a functional suspension system because obviously for this vehicle for the suspension piece to be functional these would have to be made from real leaf springs but for the purposes of what I'm using this build for the static suspension should be suffice. You notice here they are on a runner which makes removing of the pieces from their sprue very easy. Just snip these little sections off and the units are then ready for the installation to your model. This is true for both the front and rear sections of the leaf springs. Note they are different compared to each other and you'll see exactly which ones go where once I commence the assembly. Also, at a quick glance, you'll notice that there are two types of materials found on this table. We have the white material which I use on many of my production 3D prints and we have this new material that I'm using for the actual differentials. You see I was originally going to have the units all made from the white material however when it came time to actual pricing unfortunately due to the large size and complexity of these components here if these parts were made out of the white material, the cost would have been way too prohibitive. So I found another printer for these larger components who are able to output parts of really decent quality and most importantly, very good strength, but for a fraction of the cost of the white material. The white material is still a little bit better in my opinion in its surface texturing. So for pieces like the leaf springs here, they were perfectly spiced because you get to appreciate the detailing found on the segments of the metal rods. However, because the differentials are basically tucked under the hull and even are mostly entombed by the lower plate, because of the limited amount of visibility that these pieces have, for this application, these units here with this material is more than suffice. Having said that, if you take a look at the material up close, you can see that for the medium, it's actually a very good quality. Now, like I stated before, more than likely, these are going to be improved from the way you see it here, making them slightly more accurate. You see, these components here, I actually worked with another designer to come up with, and 
we actually used as a reference kit the 135th scale M706 model from Hobby Boss. The Hobby Boss model basically has the differential in the exact same format that we see it here with the exact same type of shape and basically their tooling. However, after looking at the real units in more depth, the Hobby Boss model definitely cut some corners on a few sections making the pieces not as accurate as they really can be. So, like I said before, for the actual production units, these are going to be revised, and those units are going to be much more improved with their overall shape and detail fidelity. Having said all that, here you can see this is the rear differential. Note the inside portion here is hollow, and we have the cover cap, which will just be dropped into place once the production actually commences. Note the cover cap does have that drainage hole, or drainage fastener, I should say, found in the dead center. And here on the plate we have the locking bolts, which would then connect to the leaf springs found on these sections here. But more information on that is to come. The units are, I believe, hollow, but are very strong and are more than capable at the application at hand. You notice that on this portion here I have a universal joint that is separate. This was originally supposed to be integrally printed on, but for one reason or another it was omitted off of this unit. So this is going to be one of the attributes that change once the units go into full production. On this portion here, this is the front differential. Notice this one does have the drive shaft present. The units are basically identical, but this one here actually has the turning radiuses so that the vehicle can have actual functional steering. This is a bit different, or I should say it's a lot more simplified compared to some of the other armored cars that came before, namely like on the 222 or the Puma, for instance, where the Germans had all four-wheel steering. On the V100 armored car, that wasn't the case. They went with a standard off-the-shelf differential setup. I believe this might have been from a deuce and a half, if I'm not mistaken. But the, because of that, the units were off the shelf, which streamlined the, the uh, supply chain, as well as also maintenance on these components. And because of that, they only have front wheel steering. Now, on the model here, again, we have the bottom portion, which is hollow, to cover it up. And here we have the turning knuckles. These will pop directly in place. And I have these units over here printed in the white material, which are going to be used to seal everything together and keeping the units in place. Here we have the actual tie rod, which is again made from the black material. It's got, a, it's, got its appropriate bends in it, and we'll be able to mount directly onto the turning knuckles once fully assembled. Finally, we have these four spindles over here. These spindles are what connect to the unit and then will actually spin in these locations. I do have to make some modifications to the CAD file as well as to these ones here. I'm going to actually bore these out so that they fit over this recess which will then allow a fastener to get threaded in and keep everything firmly in place. As for these fasteners over here, these are actually going to be for the lug nuts which will emerge from this location. And that is how the rim and the tire will be fitted to the model with actual real lug nuts. This design is basically what I utilized on the SDKZ222 build that I did a couple years ago. And it's nothing more than a, a improved version of that concept that I developed back then. If you watch those videos, you're basically going to see the wheels in a very similar format as you're going to see it on this build. Well, now that you've seen the differentials, this leads us back to the lower plate. Because of the way the armor car is designed, the differentials are somewhat in encased on the inside portion here of the hull. And to do that, clearances need to be cut away into this bottom plate in order to allow the suspension to be mounted properly. Now to put things in perspective, the way these units get fitted to the model is that that large dome section that was showcased earlier actually is going to point downward and the remainder of this cluster here is going to be housed on the inside portion of the vehicle. 
if you notice if I try to mount it this way it's going to fit it's going to sit far too tall and it's basically going to look like a monster truck version of the V100 which I'm pretty sure many of my viewers out there might think that sounds totally awesome and something that's really cool but for this build here I'm going to go with more of a historical type build as opposed to something that's really wonky like a monster truck V100 although that does sound pretty cool now, like I said before, large sections of these two portions of the lower pan need to be removed in order to allow for the clearance. Well, that's where the 135th scale model came in. As you can see on the bottom portion here, we have all these cutouts found on these locations. However, I'm not going to make it look identical to the one here found on this model, and that's because of something that I encountered when I was doing a little bit more research on this vehicle. You see, here I have some pictures of the real V100 armor card that I took at, again, a military vehicle show. And you can most clearly see that the bottom portion, this here is the front, so, okay, you're looking at it in this way, do not look, or, or, or I should say are vastly different compared to the layout that we see here on the 135 scale model. What more than likely, my hunch is what you're seeing here, is that Hobby Boss took a shortcut on their 135th scale model kit. You see, Hobby Boss not only makes this rendition of the V100, but they also make the renditions that were produced by Cadillac Gage all the way up until recent years. And if I was to take a guess, I would say that Cadillac Gage probably redesigned some aspects of the lower chassis, which differed from the original rendition that was developed during the 1960s. And since Hobby Boss released those renditions of this model armor car as well, that's probably what you're seeing over here. And they just recycled the lower pan in order to save a few pennies in order to give you the model kit that I have here in my hand. I do want to point out that's definitely seen here on the wheel wells. If you notice, I basically copied the Hobby Boss pattern. However, as it turns out, upon doing further research, this here is not exactly accurate for a Vietnam era V100, and it's actually more squared off in its overall geometry. For this model here, it's something that I could easily live with, and but it's something that I'm definitely going to pay attention to if slash when I ever get a chance to do another V100 armor car. So that's something to keep in mind. When you're doing these 1-6 scale scratch builds, or just 1-6 scale builds in general, and you're using a 135th scale or smaller scale model, that's actually a really good thing to do. It, it makes us a good builder aid, but never solely depend on the 135th scale model because a lot of times plastic companies tend to have mistakes or take shortcuts that you may not know about, but you can transition onto your big one and basically can lead to some issues. Again, the wheel wells, not really a super important aspect of this build for me anyhow, so but it's something I do want to point out for anyone who's either working on their own V100 or are just doing small scale to large scale conversions like I have here. So because the cutouts are vastly different between the model and the unit found here on the real one, I'm going to mirror the real one's lower plate as much as possible from henceforth. So as you can see, I went ahead and marked up these sections over here for the amount of area needing to be removed. Here I have these pictures. And by the way, all these photographs that I have of this vehicle are listed on the EastCoastArmory.com Facebook page. So if anyone wants to use that build as a reference, you're free to do so. The link is found in the video description listed below. So as you can see, here we have the cutouts for the, this is obviously the front differential. And I went ahead and mirrored this look as much as possible on this portion here. Let me get the camera off the tripod so you get a good look at it. And here you can see how the piece is going to be carved away. Note, this highlight over here is the differential. I just traced over it. And now when it came to doing this, I had to make sure it was absolutely squared where it needed to go. Because once you start hacking away sections of the lower pan, if the piece is misaligned, this can definitely lead to some issues. So by properly lining it up, this should alleviate potential problems. Note the areas that you see that are crosshatched. These are all sections that are going to be amputated away from the lower pan. Not just the lower plate, but also the side plate here is going to get some sections removed as well, as these were seen, again, on the 
real example that I'm using for reference. Same can also be said here on the rear portion. Now, when it comes time to amputate these sections, I'm going to be utilizing the Dremel Multimax as well as a standard cutting stone in order to hack away at the desired locations. Once these sections are removed, I am then going to start plating up the inside portion of the well, which would be found on the real vehicle, as I don't want to have any large open recesses on the inside portion of this model. <laughs> So now you can see that the sections of the lower hull have been amputated. And now from here I need to fabricate the inner box section. Otherwise I'm going to have these giant gaping holes on the inside of the model. And basically it reminds me of something like the Flintstones mobile which is something I want to avoid. So I'm going to go ahead and fabricate a new inner box. More than likely out of Lexan. However I want to point out that you see on the model here the original builder went ahead and put these bulkheads going across the center spans. This is great for structural integrity but unfortunately they're going to have to be altered and if not moved because of the box frame that I need to assemble. The one here in the front isn't too bad I may be able to work around it but I'll see as the construction progresses but the one here in the back is definitely not going to work at all so I'm going to have to do something to address this. <laughs>
as you can see from the last scene, I'm going through the removal process for the bulkheads. With the one in the front here, I, w I needed to actually just trim away and amputate the section with the Dremel. You'll notice that I went ahead and added putty to the sidewall here. Same thing on this side, but it's kind of hard to get in here with this camera angle. The reason for the putty was, of course, there was some remembrance left of the tooling marks from the removal process. So this is just going to be sanded down once the stuff sets, and then I'll be able to fully encapsulate the inside. Now, it's one of those things where it's not going to be visible on the outside but it just it just bothers me if I leave the tool marks in place so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and blend that away with the panel in the back that wasn't really necessary luckily on the one in the back I have a lot more access to getting in here and I was actually able to just pop the plate off combination of easy access plus old glues really help with the removal of this plate which is actually a good thing because I'm going to actually recycle this plate when I go ahead and rebuild the inner capsule for the section here. There are some remembrance here on the wall, which I'll go ahead and just polish away with some sandpaper, which will smooth everything out, and then I can start the encapsulating process. <laughs> Okay, well, here you can see that the wells have now been added. They really do change a lot of the profile of the lower hull. And they are thoroughly sealed off. Obviously, it was done to both the front and the back. And like I said before, I utilized both materials. I recycled that piece of styrene from before, and the remainder of the panels on the two wells were fabricated out of Lexan. During the procedure for the front well, I did suffer a little bit of damage on this plate over here. Nothing major, just some of the seams started opening up from me prying the plate in when I was trying to adjust the width. It's not, it wasn't a big problem. I already went ahead and repaired it with the adhesives. And from here, if you notice, I just add another coat of body putty. From here, or I should say off screen, I'm just gonna go ahead and sand that off so that problem would be fully addressed. Back to the well area, you can see that with the wells now made, the differentials just drop directly in place. And once the leaf springs are added, they will have their appropriate height to them. With the camera in this angle, you get to see what the inside of the hull looks like. Now, this is one thing I want to point out for anyone who's doing any sort of large scale or even 116 scale full body scratch builds. When it comes to fastening panels to one another, one really nice tip I'd like to recommend is the utilization of angles or plastic angles for use of braces. You can see that along the seams where the two sections meet, and even on the front lower plate, or I should say this is the rear lower plate, but the front's no different, I went ahead and mounted strips of plastruct angle. The angle is a really good technique for this type of a procedure because it gives you a place for the panel to lock onto. You get to adjust the angles when, t when you're fitting them, so you get some really nice, precise straight edges. And if you take your time and use some squares and other type of measuring tools, you can get the unit as squared off as you possibly can. And another benefit that it has is that it gives added strength. Because of the way the angles are designed, you have more surface area for the adhesives to bond to. And it really is a fantastic method for affixing panels like you see here. With this type of setup, the model is actually much more rigid and reinforced compared to the way it was originally. This is what the strips look like. 
you can buy them in basically any hobby shop or obviously online is another avenue. And again, if anyone's doing any sort of large scale scratch building or large structure scratch building, these pieces here are definitely something that you want to have in your arsenal. The addition of the wells is a humongous step forward on this build and it's again one of those modifications that really transforms the model from its original format. This is basically one of the last mods that I believe needs to be made hull wise to this vehicle. There is however one more modification that I do need to make in terms of the hull and that has to do with the rear wheel well that we have on either side. You see on the real V100 armored car there is a cutout in this section over here to allow space for a large shock absorber which connects to the differential. Obviously on the model right here I do not have that cutout added at this time but that will be mounted shortly after the next step on this build which at this point here means that I need to now work on the leaf springs. You see I need to get the leaf springs now adjusted and mounted to this model so that I can fit on the differentials and then once the differentials are fit on that allows me then to figure out the locations for the shocks as well as the other bits of details that need to be mounted to the wheel whale well areas on this model. You see this is how you do things on these models. You need to do everything in layers in order to get everything in its proper proportions and also in many cases for it to function correctly. So. From here on out, let's go ahead, skip ahead to where I start working on the leaf springs. Well, starting with the rear leaf springs, that takes us to this set that we have here. Now, I already mentioned these parts earlier. Now, when it comes for the parts, you'll notice that they are on this little runner. And I'm going to go ahead and snip them off in order to start prepping them for the, the mounting to the model. When it comes for the snips, however, these sections, these two descending sections of the runner are actually going to be kept because when it comes time for fitting, these sections here are actually going to plug directly into the model, which will make it a nice stronger application, specifically once the adhesives get secured on. The last thing I want to do is pick up this model and the whole piece just gives out and boom, and then falls out, which is kind of embarrassing. So to prevent that from happening, I'm going to leave these pegs in place. In order to remove the pegs, I'm just going to use my clean cut snips here, and I'm just going to snip away right here on the unit. Okay, they are now fret. From this point here, I'm going to line them up laterally on this plane. Also, you'll notice with the rear leaf springs, they are much different in design from the front ones with how they secure to the vehicle. If you notice on the ones on the front, we have the two leaf spring mounts, which secure to this surface here on the front wheel section, while on the rear unit, one of them will connect to this area over here, but the other one goes directly horizontally and mounts to this wall here of the model's hull. But this is exactly how you would see it on the real V100. Now when it comes to the lateral alignment, uh, you want to keep it as symmetrical as possible in order to prevent any sort of issues with the mounting of the rear differential. So one thing I noticed is that on the model here, I like I said before, I used some Plastruct ABS angle for supports on both of these sections during their fabrication. Well, they are nice and squared and even, so this gives me a fantastic reference point in order to point out where these parts need to be fitted. After looking at the model as well as the real one for reference, it seems that the pieces are slightly past the edge here on the mounting surface, so this actually makes for a perfect location to square it off. Since the pieces are, or are translucent now, they're originally clear, I scuff them up in order for the adhesives to bond, like I mentioned earlier. This gives me a good visual cue on where to line it up. So I'm just going to take my ruler, and I just now made my line. I'm going to do the same thing to the opposite side. Right around here. Perfect. Now I have a fantastic index point in order to fit these units where they need to be. Here for alignment I took the rear differential and temporarily press fit the, the leaf springs in their locations. 
Now I can go ahead and see how the indexing lines up. However, I am going to have to make a slight modification to the actual leaf springs in order to get the unit properly aligned. Let me bring the camera around and show you exactly why. With the camera readjusted to this angle, hopefully you get to see what I'm referring to. Here we have the rear differential and it looks like it's pretty much where it needs to be, but looks can be deceiving because if I put the wheel right over here and try to center it as much as possible, you'll see that it's not properly aligned with the wheel well. The wheel is slightly to the right, which means if I try to mount in this configuration, the wheel is just going to rub against the wheel well here and visually it's going to be off. So it's not, so some further modifications going to have to be made to the model, or I should say to these parts at this time. But those aren't the only modifications I'm going to have to make in order to get these parts fitted to this model. You see, if you look here, you'll notice that the leaf springs are much more further apart compared to where I mentioned where they need to be in the earlier scene. And there's a reason for that because these parts that I'm using were not designed for use on this particular scratch built model of the V100 armor car. These parts here were designed for another 1/6 scale V100 armor car model, but I'll go into more information on that as towards the end of this video series. For this model here, these parts are just being repurposed and shoehorned in order to fit on this scratch built one-off piece. So in order to do that, some modifications are going to be made to these components here in order to get them to fit. Luckily, the parts are actually really close to where they need to be. Just some tweaks and changes are going to be made along the way in order to get them finalized for this rendition. Also, as one might guess, this situation is not just going to be found on the rear differential, but also the one for the front. But we're going to go over that once I finish up the mods made to the rear. The first modification we're going to make is to get this section more centered with the rear differential well. Now the way this is going to be done is luckily with the way the leaf spring is designed we have these two bars that come across the section here. Well one really easy way for me to shorten the length is I'm going to go ahead and make an incision on this portion over here. With this unit removed I could remove the amount of material necessary off of this section in order to get this corner closer towards the center. Once I have the alignment done, I can then drill a hole in each of these sections, install a metal rod, which will then fuse the two units together, give it a lot of strength, and from there visually you're not going to see any difference because we have this large U-shaped bracket on this side here, which will cover up the seam. Once the paint and the other layers go on, it's going to look absolutely seamless. Okay, well, here I have the unit now resized. As what we've seen before, I amputated this chunk that we have here. The size is, uh, I'd say, about a half an inch, possibly a little less. And obviously, I already started cutting up the other one, but you can see the unit now reassembled. Like I said before, once everything is done, it's going to be pretty seamless because of that U bar that I had, or that I mentioned earlier. With the unit propped up here on the side. You can see how the center portion lines up a lot better now with the mark that I labeled on the hull. So from here, let me go ahead and do the same modification to the other one. Oh, I want to point out, like I said before, 
you can't just glue these two halves together specifically I mean on a good day it's hard to glue these two halves together but when you have something like a load bearing part like the differential that is just a recipe for a disaster so like I said before in order to secure two halves together I drilled a hole in the center of each of these sections that are pretty substantial in length and I have a eighth of an inch steel rod that is then glued on the inside the steel rod is more than capable enough and with the adhesives at hand to keep everything where it needs to be and also keep it structurally sound to hold up the weight of the model when it's placed on its wheels once the model progresses past this point. After the glue set on the leaf springs, it was then obviously time for mounting. The mounting went absolutely smooth, just like I mentioned before. All I had to do was drill two corresponding holes on these two locations, and then the units just dropped directly in place. Currently, the adhesives are setting. Once done, I could go ahead and flip this guy around and do the exact same modification, but on the front leaf spring system. Needless to say, two of the things to watch out for when it comes to mounting these type of parts is, of course, alignment both with the lateral motion, as well as also you wanna make sure that they are nice and square so that once your differential drops in, it's not a nice even piece and you're not canted to one side or another. I already made sure that the leaf springs themselves were squared up using the square that I have here. And for the other dimensions, well, let's see, if I put the bubble level on top, boom, you can see exactly that they are ex where precisely they need to be. Okay, now that I'm on the front leaf springs assembly, I went ahead and dry fitted the front differential and the row wheel into the wheel well, and it turns out that the center point is right there. Now, luckily, well, so far it seems that the way things are working is that the leaf spring itself does not need to be shortened as much as it did on the one in the rear. It seems like in order to get the piece to line up with the center, all I need to do is just remove this little portion here that this, that hangs out from the rear leaf spring mount. If I go ahead and amputate that and butt the unit directly up against the wall, it appears that I will have the leaf springs right at their center point. So let's go ahead and make some chips. Okay, well, I went ahead and shortened the units on both sides, and I temporarily affixed them to the differential, lined everything up, and it appears like I like I was hunching towards before. I think we're exactly where we need to be. We just take the tire, just try to center that. Boop, there we 
we go. Yeah, I think that works just fine. It appears to be dead center, and I do have ample clearance for the unit to, to turn. Yep, I think I can progress from here. So the vertical lines up, but now let's see how the horizontal matches up as well. And keep in mind on the front, it's just as if not more important with the alignment as opposed to the rear. So let's see, here we have, looks like one and three quarters. That's good. All right, let's see how that matches up. One and three quarters. All right, so this is fantastic. The parts are exactly where they need to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and carefully mark everything out drill the corresponding holes and get these leaf springs dropped into place. are basically set the next thing to look at are the gaps in between the mounts and the mounting plate like what was mentioned before these pieces here were basically just scaled up versions from the 135th scale hobby boss kit and on the hobby boss kit these are designed to plug into the hull well on this model here that wasn't the case and also i wasn't able to amputate these sections off of the mounts because then it would have made the installation process a lot more difficult so Rather than trying to amputate them off, I just basically kept them in place. And from here, I'm going to add some weld beads, which will blend everything in. The sculpted weld beads will give the appropriate height to these pieces, but will also give them extra added detailing. And most importantly, will also give them added strength. As for the weld beads, well, they're gonna look something like this. And over here on the back, we have the other welds that have now been sculpted on. And of course it's a mirror image on the opposite side. Well, not really a mirror image, more like an exact image on the reverse side. Well with the leaf springs now done, the next step of course is going to be the differentials. Here I have the front one and I could just drop it directly in place, it should just plug, since I didn't modify any other aspects of this one. And ta-da, the piece just fits directly where it needs to be. And this is gonna be the next leg of the build, which would include getting these units finalized, mounted, and with the other corresponding components that have to do with this system here, fully fleshed out. However, I believe that this is a nice point to end this video off because from here on out, the amount of work 
that needs to be added to revising these units, plus tooling up the other components in order to flesh the rest of the suspension out, is really going to be something best discussed in another project update video. And with that, that wraps up this project update video for this 1-6 scale Cadillac Gauge V100 armor car. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posted content, being 1-6 scale project update videos like this fellow over here, or the other smaller scale model showcase videos that frequently get posted to this channel. Another way to keep in loop of new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There, I have more photographs of this particular build that have been posted since the project start, as well as the other smaller and larger scale builds that are seen on this channel. Finally, don't forget to swing by eastcoastarmory.com for 1.6 scale and 1.16 scale builds, as well as detailed components. Thanks for stopping by. Till next time.